Dreams are really important to us. Did you know that, for example, if a person is denied dreams, that is, if when a person is sleeping and their eyes begin to move under their eyelids to betray the fact that they're dreaming, if you kind of jostle them and don't let them dream, if they get plenty of sleep but no dreams, that person within 24 hours of sleep deprivation will begin to evidence some of the symptoms of psychosis. And after 48 hours of dream deprivation, that person will be uh, certifiably schizophrenic. Now, fortunately, regaining the dream deficit puts the mind back where it belongs again. But it's interesting the way dreams work. And I see things when I dream. Chinese have taught us for years how to interpret symbols seen in dreams. For example, I have a number of them with me. And we have things like a, uh, like a light bulb. That would mean a bright idea. Or uh, a fish. Or a smiley face. Or a sword. All of these, if you look in the dream books, have their interpretations. There's a young lady sitting over here on the end. Hello. Um, we've not met before, you and I. No, you seem rather pleased at that. <laughs> All right. Um, hmm. Would you please look into your memory, look into your subconscious, and pull out a symbol that you may have seen in a dream? For example, we have stars and, and little stop signs and pluses and, and chains and all manner of things, but they're there must be one symbol that you closely associate with yourself, perhaps. What might that symbol be? Waterfalls and rivers, water. Waterfalls and rivers. There's a challenge for us. <laughs> I think, however, that I have in here, I think I have in here, um, well, that's, that's a heck of a note, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Hey, stay with me on this one. Um, we have a nice little sun. We have an eye. But we're looking for a waterfall. I'm not sure we'll find a waterfall. If it, uh, there is, it won't be well done. There's a little tree. <laughs> a little umbrella. Oh. That must be the waterfall. Hmm. Doesn't look like much of a waterfall, but... I think it is. You can, you can almost see the water flowing over the falls and pooling there at the bottom. It's not a very good representation, I'm sure, but that's not the point of all this. You see, I said that, that, that I asked you to, to give us, please, an image which popped into your mind, but I specifically didn't ask for your name. Would you tell us now your name, please? Tell me for the first time. Mason. Mason. Isn't it interesting? that all of these cards are blank on the back, but the one card which had the waterfall has a name on the back. Mason. All right, thank you. That's a lovely waterfall. <laughs> well, but we're going to go on. We're not going to reshoot that one. We're going to go ahead. Because, you see, the big kick is the name on the back of the card. That's the real big kick. Essentially, it's a very, very simple technique. All you need is a whole bunch of blank on both sides index cards. And then you place on them a whole bunch of drawings. Now, you should use one of those, um, oh, when I was a youngster, we used to call it a grease pencil, a China marking pencil. In England, they call it a China graph marker. It's basically black wax. That's what you make all of your drawings with, because that's important. All right? All of the drawings except, well, you need one more white card. And then before the program, you must simply learn the name of one of the ladies in the audience. I learned Mason. I surreptitiously asked, no, the gentleman you're with did not set you up. I asked someone else. Okay. So I wrote Mason on the back of the card. 
somewhat more legibly than that. And then that one card was turned over and placed down about third in this pack of, of, of drawings. There's one more item that was used in addition to the rubber band. And that would be one of these. It's called a thumb writer, a nail writer, a swami gimmick, okay? It's basically a little device that clips onto your thumb and it holds that listo lead, that crayon lead, right in the tip of it. And you can actually write or draw with your thumb. You have all the time in the world because after you, oh, it starts off underneath the rubber band holding the uh, packet of cards together. So when you pick up the packet of cards, you're slipping your thumb into the gimmick and taking off the rubber band all at the same time. So any fumbling appears to be rather natural, okay? I'll tell you in a second how to make one of these. I did last year, I'll tell you again, okay? So after you've shown the first three and several of the other cards in the pack, you simply cut the card with Mason written on it to the top and ask her, what image do you see in your mind? Normally you get something like a tennis racket, <laughs> a star, a flower, but no. <laughs> we got a waterfall, but that's all right. Because the kicker is what really makes it. You have all the time in the world to do your drawing as you're ostensibly looking for that waterfall card in the pack. For example, what symbol might you have named, young lady? Be kind. Um, how about a cloud? A cloud. That's easy. I can do cloud. <laughs> So here's how you do it. As you're thumbing through, you just give it one of these, and then you, oh, well, look, here's a smiley face. Now, you were looking for a cloud, weren't you? All right, we'll do this. So there's a little, there's a little house. And so as you're going through, you can just draw that little cloud little bit by little bit. If you want to, you can even draw some lightning coming out of the bottom of it. It's not all that difficult whatsoever. You have plenty of time as you're going through, ostensibly looking for it, to draw what you want on the card. The other thing you must do is, after you've gone a while, when your drawing is complete, simply slide it over on top of the pack as if you had just found it in the center. Show the card, cut it to the top, remind them that all the others are blank on the back, and yet somehow in the dream, you saw Mason. And that's all there is to it. What do you think? Yeah. Can I tell you how to make one of these? Now, by the way, uh, these uh, band writers, and this is technically a band writer. Uh, these band writers, uh, for those of you watching on videotape, will be available from Syzygy. You can also uh, tune in to our webpage, www lee-earl.com. Uh, but here's how you do it. Get yourself a thumb tip, a plastic thumb tip. Jam it on your thumb as tightly as it will go and put a little dot on the thumb tip where you want the, the, the pencil lead to be or the crayon lead to be. Then get a real sharp knife, uh, pull your thumb out, <laughs> and slice that thumb tip like a salami, about an eighth of an inch on either side of that mark. And what you'll get then is a little ring of thumb tip like this. Then you melt a hole through the thumb tip with, with a piece of coat hanger, okay? The reason you melt the hole, you don't drill it, you don't punch it. The reason you melt it is, as you melt it, the vinyl will melt, liquefy, flow to one side, and then re-harden. And it forms a little bit of like a tunnel rather than just a hole. Then take your wax uh, uh, listo lead, put it in place, give it a little press to make it kind of spread out and grasp the sides of that little tunnel put a little piece of tape on the inside to keep it from pushing all the way through and to keep your finger from being soiled, and that's all there is to it. You have got a very inexpensive little band writer or thumb writer, okay? Make several, not just one, because Murphy attends every show you do. And the last thing you want to have happen is you're going through here, well, let's see now, we'll find that waterfall, whoops. <laughs> Maybe it's on the floor. They're really small waterfalls. You see, I mean, you're dead. In that case, you simply go to your pocket and get your backup thumb writer. All right. This um, 
This presentation is also from a fellow who uh, you will be hearing from a lot in the future. Uh, he's written several books in mentalism. Uh, he's already a, a presence uh, in the business. Uh, he's a very impressive guy physically. He's a large, kind of a bear of a guy, but he's friendly. Uh, his name is John Riggs. He's the author of Heavy Mental, The Man with the $1.98 Hands, Magic from the Ambient Domain, The Complete Fortune Teller, the even completer fortune teller, <laughs> Uh, psychic soirees, the psychic agenda, phrenology for the psychic entertainer, enough of a commercial for him. His name is John Riggs. He called it Dream Design, and I hope you liked it. Okay.